Hello, Whippersnappers. Mike from the WCA. I want to show you a game from the Week 3 uh, update. The uh, players are Leia playing the white side and Advite playing black. I'm showing it to you because it's continuing our series of preparing WCA students for what happens in real tournaments. So the positions that we've been getting on a weekly basis are really the same kind of positions that are showing up at the tournament. So I hope you learn something each week so that when you're playing your own tournament games, you kind of have a better feel for what's going on. All right, so here's uh, a four knights position again with bishop to b5 being played. We have discussed many times if black plays bishop to c5 that we can take that pawn in the middle. We've been doing this for the first uh, two weeks so far. Uh, so now in week three, Advite plays a different move. He plays pawn a6, uh, hitting Leia's bishop right away. So she takes on c6, and Advite knows in this position to take back with his d pawn, taking away from the center, which opens up the bishop and opens up a line for the queen as well, which is very important just in case Miss Leia decides to snap off this pawn here in the middle, which she can do. But if she does take that pawn, if you're black and you have this type of position, you have to know what to do here. And you can actually get away with taking this pawn. So this is kind of weird. It almost looks like a center fork trick, except after this capture, you're not going to fork these two knights with the pawn. But you are going to fork them with something else. Can you see the move? Yes. Queen to d4. Now, this type of position comes up over and over again. I really want to make sure you guys understand these tricks, okay? So I'm purposely going back to the starting position, which was here, bishop to b5. In lots of different openings you're going to hear, like the Rui Lopez and some variations of the Sicilian, there are times when you can remove a knight and then take a pawn. It happens in lots of openings. So here in the game, um, when Advite kicks that bishop, if Leia wants to go pawn hunting, she can, but she has to understand there is a little bit of danger. Now, as black, if you're going to allow this, you absolutely have to know how to handle this. So the correct move here is to actually take, and if and when they take that knight on e4 and you get forked, as white here, you simply castle. Black needs to get their piece back because they're down a minor piece right now. Question is, which knight do you take? All right, if you want to pause your video and take a moment, I would be curious to know what you come up with. Which one of you birds said that you want to take the pawn in the back? If you did, you would be correct. Taking the back pawn is the best way to go because grabbing anything on the e-file, I mean anything, when your king is still sitting up there, you see the difference between Leia's king and Advites? You have to make sure that these rooks don't get on this line and cause all sorts of problems for your queen or your king. This is such a common occurrence. Okay, so after queen takes, in the event that Leia tries to steal that uh, file and, and make something, you know, like a discovered check or a discovered move winning the queen, it's very important that Advite would find the move bishop to e6. Now, this did not happen in the game, but it easily could have. I am so sure that you're going to see this kind of thing again. I'm actually going to show it to you all over again. Oh, no, please don't. Oh, yes. Watch. Starting position. Advite kicks the bishop. Bishop takes knight. Pawn takes bishop. And pawn hunting. Remember, in this type of position, you can get away with taking this pawn, uh, this pawn, yes, if you have this queen fork. And once it comes, when they castle, and trust me, they will, remember to take the knight in the back. The reason, once the rook hits the queen and the king, you have time to develop a minor piece. And by developing that minor piece, when this knight moves, notice she can't. the knight can't move here or here because the queen is not pinned. 
you can just take this knight. If the knight drops back, let's say to g3, then you can just simply move your queen away and life goes on. A sample variation might be, I don't know, maybe d3 to develop the dark square bishop and castle long. Now, there's still more information I want to give you about this position. Let me turn on a highlight. You see those pawns? This is a very common pawn structure. It happens a lot. Um, and how does it happen? Well, you know, the pawn came to a6, it attacked a bishop, the bishop took the knight, and the d pawn took back. Okay, that pawn structure is very inviting for the black king because there's now an extra pawn on the queen side to protect him. There's something else that's pretty good for black in this position. You have the two bishops. There's only one center pawn left, which means the board is kind of open, and all of you birds know that bishops love open positions. So each team would have an advantage here. What is black's advantage? Their king has an extra pawn to protect him, and they have these two wonderful bishops, and white enjoys uh, control of the e-file first and the better pawn structure. Okay, I hope that makes sense. It could easily happen in one of your games. However, after uh, this position, after Advite took back, I like Leia's move. She didn't want to go pawn hunting in the middle, um, and she just decided to castle. So at your level, I like this kind of idea a lot because now you avoid all of the pins and all of the tricks that happen against your king. So it's Advite here who needs to be a little bit careful. So he plays bishop to g4, Leia develops, and then pawn h6. Maybe not necessary to prevent the pin, but certainly a good move. Both players are absolutely fine in this position. Leia with bishop e3, and then Advait with knight h5. This is the only move that I would question at this point, only because he's moving the same piece twice, and it's not 100% clear what he was intending to do with this knight. Now, if you look at the position, he's certainly not lost. Maybe he was intending to put the knight on f4, and that looks pretty good. Um, the only issue is, and please remember, never forget the color of your uniform. If you're playing the black pieces, getting your pieces developed and getting castled is really important, especially in these king pawn openings, because in those openings, the minor pieces tend to come out quickly. And if you get caught undeveloped, very unpleasant, I tell you. Anyway, he played knight h5, and then a couple of weird things started to happen. Um, she played h3 and attacked his bishop, and I'm not sure if this was a touch move issue or if he was planning to sacrifice on purpose. Uh, more common in this kind of position would be just to take the knight, the queen, let's say, taking back, and then you see the problem with knight um, h5, the knight is getting hit again, and if you move it back, you're kind of losing a little bit of time. Again, white is not winning for sure here, although it looks like white got developed a little bit faster. However, let's take a look at the game. Advite sacks his bishop on h3, and um, really not getting enough for it, um, because after she takes that bishop, he then attacks it with the queen, which is kind of a move too late. And here, uh, Leia missed a chance to really just close out the game that quickly. Um, she could just take this pawn on e5, attacking the queen. This feels really strange because you're inviting the queen in, um, but you have a really, really crushing move as white. Can you find it? So remember, you're up a piece. And the black queen is in your territory. How cool would it be to trade queens here and play the rest of this game up a piece? See it? Yep, queen g4. Really good move. And once you play queen g4, pretty much have to take. Um, and when you do, you just take back and you can do the math and see that white uh, is up an, uh, an extra minor piece. And that's winning, okay? However, Leia played the move here queen to d2, which allows Advite to take on h3. So now he has two pawns for the piece. Okay, 
Now she takes on e5. And it turns out here, having two pawns for the piece, uh, while it may not be 100% accurate, in this position, he has a draw if he wants it. Now, how do you find it? Well, if you can play queen g4 check, you'll notice that that king is going to have no choice but to bounce around down here, and you can keep repeating checks. However, you don't have queen g4 right now because the knight will take you. Can you guys see that pattern? I was really impressed. I love going over these games. Pawn f6, and all of a sudden the knight has to move away. If it goes to g6, it's even worse because now after um, queen g4, check, the king moves. I don't have to go for the repeating moves. I can just take the knight, and now I still... Um, have your king kind of boxed out, and black is doing pretty well here. So after f6, let's say the knight picks um, a more sensible square like c4 out of danger. Now you just have a draw if you wanted this black. And why not? We sacrifice that piece. Um, just give a check. King h2. Can you see how to draw this game? That's right. Just keep checking on the h file, and eventually white's going to get really, really tired and shake your hand. It's going to be a draw. Okay, so I hope you're learning a couple of things from these games. I certainly did. Anyway, let's go back. So Leia took, and here Advite didn't see the drawing idea, and Castle. So maybe, you know, he's playing for a win. Uh, he, he doesn't want to draw. And the game really got interesting. Um, a couple of ideas. Um, that looks tempting. Why not take the F pawn and fork both rooks? It looks like it's winning, but it's not. You understand why, right? Yeah, you just have queen g4 with the same pattern that you learned. So hopefully this video, you'll remember these ideas. I'll write them in the blog. Um, so when you see them written and then actually watch them on the screen, hopefully they'll really sink in and you'll remember these uh, ideas for your games. So, you know, Leia could grab that knight and then, uh, I'm sorry, the pawn, but queen g4, we have a draw. Okay, she played a very interesting move here. Uh, oh, by the way, I like the way Advite castled into that pawn structure. Structure We've already discussed that. Uh, but don't forget, he is down a piece. You, you know, he doesn't have that bishop pair we talked about. Um, but she played bishop to a7, which was kind of a cool move. Um, it puts the bishop on a, on a square that doesn't let the king kind of sneak out so that if uh, you know she were able to check on this diagonal, she may have some mating threats or, or some attack, um, but you have to be really careful when you put a bishop inside a cluster of pawns. Um, sometimes I call this the mouse trap. The bishop can get trapped in there and um, you know it's possible to get uh, trapped. You know, I can just play king here and pick off the bishop. Um, but let me show you a cool idea. If you if this happened, with white, you can take a pawn, and when they take back, you can um, at least get one pawn back. Now here's a little puzzle for you, or a question. You see another pawn hanging here? Can Leia take that? Now this didn't happen in the game, but it could have. So here's the question. If you take it, white is lost. Now the question is, can you figure out why? Well, the problem for white is after queen g4 check now, it's not about repeating positions. It's about checkmating the king. There's no knight now to come back and defend some of these squares. And as you'll see, uh, first of all, how do you get out of check? You have two moves. If you choose this one here, um, the problem is you're going to get hit with knight f4. And now there are multiple mating threats. This is checkmate. And in some lines, this is going to be checkmate. So for example, if I want to guard g2 and put my rook on g1, well, then you just put your queen here. If I want to guard this square and put my queen up on that one, you, you checkmate me on g2. So the only way to get out of this is white is going to have to give up their queen. Okay, now keep in mind this did not happen. But as students, go back, there's the bishop. And there's the mousetrap. 
Okay, so watch out for this stuff. If you try to get out of it by giving up the bishop for a pawn, you can get away with it. But taking the other pawn would be the end of your game. <laughs> You're going to lose this game. All right. After the mouse trap, he just develops a piece and does ignores the bishop. And then uh, Leia is sitting there going, okay, what to do? And she makes a move that's going to get her in trouble, but it ends up winning the game for her. How is that possible? Well, let me show you. Queen e3, I think maybe Advite was thinking she's just connecting with the bishop up there, but he forgot it was attacking his queen, and he ended up playing uh, bishop takes on e5, which loses the game because she can simply take uh, take the queen and this is what happened in the game and notice it's almost checkmate you'd have to block with the rook and then I think class was ending and they couldn't finish this but he's in big trouble here um, however however what should he do after queen e3 um, how do you just proceed you can just take the queen and after the pawn takes back then take this and you're doing really well um, next question what if you got forked can black save himself? Certainly, just take a piece. And when they take back, you can play a move like, you know, g6 to protect your knight. And uh, it can get really sloppy from here, but you can see that this works out much better than just losing the queen. Okay, I'm gonna call it a day here. I hope you learned something from this and, and kind of remember these ideas for your games. Um, you guys are doing really well. All right, I'll see you um, Sunday.